Okay, uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, people out there uh, who've discovered that China makes uh, some really inexpensive microprocessors. They sort of have a name, three cent processors. Uh, this is the Paduk uh, PMS150C S08. Uh, it cost me four and a quarter cents because I only bought 10 of them. If I'd bought enough of them, I'll just pop up the uh, price chart. You can see it drops into just over two cents a piece. Uh, it came from a distributor called lcsc.com. Let's uh, de-encapsulate the part and let's see what you can get for these uh, so-called three cent class processors. Uh, so here it is, an eight pin uh, SOIC. Uh, packaging actually is just as expensive or sometimes even more expensive than the silicon it contains. Uh, this company makes a huge variety of processors. This is the very cheapest and uh, because of that it has the smallest number of pins. Let's uh, drop this thing into acid and uh, take this package off and look at the silicon die that it's contained within. So here's the die. It's tiny. It's uh, 0 0.52 by 0 0.53 millimeters. Let's uh, go on to a, a yield calculator just to show how many of these you would get on a typical silicon wafer, which will help explain why they are indeed so cheap. Okay, so I measured that uh, silicon die at 0 0.52 by 0 0.53 millimeters. Why is that important? Well, if you go to an online calculator for a tech, uh, this is Cali Technologies, uh, you can type in the die size in millimeters and enter uh, some scribe information and get a rough calculation. Uh, I picked an 8-inch wafer, that's kind of unlikely that they have that kind of technology, but you get 53,000 dies per wafer. Uh, let's just go down to a much more modest one. I'm sure they're running something ex exceptionally obsolete. I uh, hear a 4-inch wafer, even that delivers uh, 12,000 dies per wafer. So you can imagine that uh, any factory producing even a single wafer uh, is producing uh, tens of thousands of parts. So and that's one of the main drivers of uh, silicon cost. Okay, well here she is. This is the uh, three cent micro uh, semiconductor die. What are we looking at? Uh, eight bond pads uh, on uh, four on each side, one up here, then two, and so on. Uh, there was eight pins in the package, so no surprise, eight uh, bond pads. Uh, you can see over on the uh, right hand side what looks like some text that's been cut off, uh, and that's because it actually has been cut off. Uh, this was uh, the uh, score mark that came down on the side of the die here if they snapped it off, but there was some text here right in the middle between the two dies uh, that would tell the uh, manufacturer some useful process information. You can see the uh, large black uh, area. That is a, a, a NOR flash that stores the program. Not a lot of program here, one, uh, one kilobyte of program. But then you can see the uh, column and uh, address uh, decoder here for getting the information uh, from the actual array. Uh, this item here uh, above the array is a uh, a transistor, a power transistor. Now, interestingly enough, this array here cannot be reprogrammed. It has to be programmed by a programmer externally. And that's, of course, uh, has a really interesting effect in terms of die area. Uh, to program these uh, NOR flash cells, you need fairly high voltage, 20, 24 volts. Uh, and those are often generated on the actual silicon die if you have a flash reprogrammable part. But that circuitry takes a fair bit of uh, area, and you can see that they don't have anything on this array around here, uh, just a simple power transistor. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so this uh, results in a very small area on the die. Uh, of course, that's the whole theme of when you have, th uh, well, it's not three cents. I mean, this silicon die is, is, is well under a penny. Um, now, in terms of, uh, uh, get the right button here in my screen capture. Uh, this uh, area here is all the uh, actual processors. It was laid out, obviously, by a, a machine. It's uh, a sea of gates uh, coming around here. Uh, in there, there's uh, 16 bytes of RAM. You can't see it structurally because it's just laid out as a bunch of gates. And then you get a bunch of um, areas here. There are actually some utility functions on the board, but surprisingly, some of these areas are actually just simply dot, dot, dots. And uh, I believe that's just simply blank uh, silicon area. Uh, this is what's known as a uh, pad limited design. Uh, you, uh, you end up with there's not enough logic to fill the die out. It's actually the pad and the placement of those which control the die size a bit. And, uh, and of course you can see that this is a very straightforward microcontroller with uh, fairly, uh, fairly modest amounts of capabilities. Well, what other details can we see? Uh, this is a, a zoom in of the uh, flash array. Let's just uh, zoom even further. You can tell we're looking at a really pro uh, modest process node because uh, individual uh, bits are you know, clearly visible uh, with only a uh, optical microscope. This is not a scanning electron microscope by any means. We're looking at here uh, modern process nodes at the very state of the art. Uh, that's uh, virtually invisible with uh, optical means. And uh, here's further confirmation. I zoomed into the uh, gate area. Uh, these lines that are going up and down are uh, metallization. 
and the gates are below. Uh, same thing, you can actually see you know, the metal lines. Uh, this is actually an advantage. Uh, this is a low power uh, process node uh, as well. When transistors get really small, you get all sorts of uh, strange power problems. So having a big process node is actually quite advantageous. You can't run this chip very fast, but again, microprocess uh, microcontrollers don't run very fast. You know, a me few megahertz is uh, more than adequate for this market space. So sometimes having an old process node is of, of no consequence. Uh, in fact, if you shrank these transistors down to the most uh, smallest you could get, uh, you'd you'd run into a real big problem because the pads would just dominate the die and uh, you'd have a, a trouble indeed. So you have some interesting problems actually when you get down to the very uh, smallest uh, silicon dies. Well, there you go. That is what you get when you spend uh, exactly uh, three cents on a processor, an entirely uh, credible uh, diet we're looking at here.